Hello and welcome to the channel. This is Daniel Ball and today we're going to be going over the CMS call settings, a precursor to the lab walkthrough that I'm going to do in the next two videos. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Now there are only a few basic call settings that could be configured from the web interface. Now technically you could leave all the settings at their default values and calls would still work. However, the following settings could be changed in order to uh, enhance the user experience. So the SIP media encryption setting, now this must be compatible with your existing call control and endpoints. The setting recommended for most usage is allow, which allows both encryption and non-encryption connections. Now take care before setting it to required. You do this if you'd want to specify that encryption is required before calls can connect because a mismatch of encryption between the meeting server and the devices is going to prevent a call from connecting. So just be aware of that. Now, SIP call participants label, this enables site names to be overlaid on video messages. This might be something to think about if you're migrating, say, from MCUs that use this feature. Now, you could also customize the maximum bandwidth per call uh, to use for different call types, but I'd recommend just going ahead and leaving everything else at their default settings. Now, beyond this, in terms of call settings, uh, the way you should think about this, the way you should approach it is that you want want to be able to integrate the Cisco meeting server with other infrastructure devices to be able to expand how participants can connect to your meetings. So if you go into Cisco's website, you can go in and find guides on how to deploy CMS with Expressway, for example. There's also a CMS with CCM deployment guide, uh, which uh, this one details, you know, how you'd configure a SIP trunk between the meeting server and the Cisco Unified Communications Manager. And this is actually what I'm going to demo in the next uh, one or two labs. I'm going to do a walkthrough for this, so stay tuned for that. And also this guide explains how to set up scheduled rendezvous and ad hoc calls between the two devices, uh, which I've already created a few videos about that uh, as well, so you can check those out for more information. Now, there's also a Cisco Meeting Server Deployments with third-party call control guide. Now, I wanted to point this out real quick because this provides examples of how to configure the meeting server to work with third-party call control devices. So this would be, say, uh, from a call control system uh, from Avaya or, or Polycom DMA, for example. Uh, as long as it's a standard-based system, you should be able to integrate it with CMS. Now, as I showed you in the previous video, Lab 1, Task 3B, uh, there are inbound and outbound rules in the CMS that allow call routing into and out of that server. Now, there are only three basic steps to configuring the SIP trunk connection from the CCM to the CMS. The first is to create a SIP trunk security profile. Now, the SIP trunk security profile determines what level of security is used for calls traversing this trunk and what certificates should be used if necessary. Now, when you're configuring this, you're going to need to pay close attention to certain settings, which I'm going to highlight when we go through that lab. If I try to explain it now, it's not going to make very much sense. So, so just keep that in the back of your mind and we'll circle back to this in the next one or two videos. Two, the next step is to create a SIP trunk. Now, when you configure the SIP trunk on the CCM, there are a lot of settings that could be configured, which are uh, unique to, the, to each company respectively. However, there are some settings that must be configured for every SIP trunk to the CMS. These settings include, uh, for example, just a few of them, device name, device pool, SIP information, etc., etc. Again, we'll take a closer look at these when we go through the lab. Now, the SIP trunk security profile and the SIP trunk only establish a connection between the CCM and the CMS. So for calls to actually be routed, there must be rules configured that determine which calls to route across this trunk. Okay, now there are two rule patterns that we can use. One is SIP route patterns. These match aliases in the form of a URI. And the second is route patterns. So these match aliases in the form of E.164. Okay. Now let's talk about WebBridge because Cisco Meeting Server Web App, which is WebBridge 3.0, this is a new you know, meeting join and user portal. Now Web App will eventually supersede Cisco Meeting App WebRCT, but we're not quite there yet, so stay tuned for that. 
Now in version 2.9, Meeting Server introduces the new Cisco Meeting Server web app, which is a browser-based client for Cisco Meeting Server that lets users join meetings in you know, audio and video. Okay, so to use this feature, you need to deploy the WebBridge 3. In addition, Meeting Server version 2.9 still offers the original Cisco Meeting app WebRTC, which uh, for now on, I'm just gonna call WebBridge 2, okay? So in this release, Cisco Meeting Server web app is not yet fully featured. Now, again, the, the intention is that in due course, it will support virtually the same feature set and supersede Cisco Meeting App WebRTC, okay? Now, I'm gonna walk you through all this in the next lab, but just uh, one quick aside, uh, an important note for Expressway users. If you're deploying WebBridge 3 and Web App, you must use Expressway version 12.6 or later. Earlier Expressway versions are not supported by WebBridge 3. However, if you are deploying uh, solely WebBridge 2 and Meeting App for WebRTC, then of course you can continue to use Expressway versions earlier than 12.6, okay? That's gonna do it for the call settings lecture, but we're gonna lab all of this, and that'll be in the next two videos. So I'll see you then. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.